Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Dump Dog and I are going to show you our newest find. What we drug home last night looks to be about a 61 to 68 International C900, 9000. I think it's a C900. I think this is a 64 model based on the way the grill and the headlights are. I've got a 62 crew cab. That's got four headlights. I think 61's had that as well. It might be a three, might be a five. Let's take a look at her. So it looks like we're missing a headlight and a surround. But we can get that off of pretty much anything of this vintage, whether it's a Scout or Travel All, whatever. We'll find that. It's got the chrome front bumper that I don't think is from it because I think it's welded on from the backside. When we pull it onto the chain, notice that it does have a sweet C-channel tow hook something or other. Looks like it's got a canister style oil filter. It's got the four cylinder engine, which is half of a 345 V8. So whatever half of that is. Couldn't get the hood open. Well, I didn't try. The other goofs couldn't get it open. Nice work, Chin. Looks like she's got a hole in the windshield. I think we're gonna name it Lemon Pie. I really just bought it because I think it's cute with the step side short box and the yellow. Oh, it looks like one of the wheels is replaced. Tech tip of the day, left-hand wheels on these internationals are left-hand thread. Straight axle front end, leaf springs. Ooh, aluminum steering box. She must have been the 285th one made. Yeah, right. It's a cool radio connection. It's got dual chrome wipers, chrome wing winders. Seat's a little chewy. Chrome shift knob. Look at that. That is pretty swanky for international. I doubt that's factory. It's a Flintstone mobile. Yeah, we bought it in the dark. Keys are there, should be good to go. Look, it's only got 3,300 miles. I'm sure that's never rolled over. It's not rusty above the windshield at least. Needs a few pieces of glass, like all of them. I thought the rocker panel had been replaced, but judging by the looks of the front end, International like the old galvanized steel. It's all right, doesn't rot out. A little rust in the fender, whiskey dent there. Look at these sweet mud flaps. You just hold on, they get better. Door wouldn't latch, so tighter shut. The back end was just full of trash. We knew that when we picked it up. We didn't know that that hole was there. So between here and three hours northwest of here, there's probably a few things scattered along the highway. It's missing the other tail light. LED backup lights? No, just backup lights. The Midwest tow bumper. It's got a tow package, is that a five prong? That is a really strange four prong. Weird. Last registered in, uh, looks like 79. So what's that, 41 years? Must have had a spare tire in there. Oh yeah, that's definitely made by a farmer. Sweet wing nut. Maybe that wasn't for the spare tire, maybe they tied something in there. The bedsides are not flat. It's got little cutouts for the wheel wells. It's got a Dana 44 in it, early one. It's begging to be C-notched, clearly, because we're not wasting anything with the floor pan there. Tailgate's not too bad a shape. Got a little twist to her, a couple dings, but at least they didn't cut it for a grain door. Super typical here for that to happen. This fender ain't too bad. Top of the box ain't all beat up. Fronts. Yeah, well, she's bowed a little bit, not bad. There's the fuel tank. I'm sure you can get those new. Yeah, right. Find it odd that they didn't come with a step here, but International's pretty cheap. Duff, aren't you gonna come check this thing? Oh, you found something dead to chew on. Got it. Look at this, though. Bob was real proud of those mud flaps. So proud that he painted his name on them. I was thinking about calling it lemon pie, but maybe it'll just be Bob. Kind of, oh, it's just the chain hooked through there and hooked onto there. 
janky international things. I think that's just held shut by hopes and dreams. Yep. Oh, sure enough. Funny that didn't fly open on the way home. Doors are pretty good. Looks like this fender's been fixed up. Hood's got a little rot where the hood hinges are. Hey, there's the gas pedal. If only there was a floor to attach it to. Kind of a neat dash. Looks like you could just pop that out and slide in some cool aftermarket sewer warner gauges. Looks like the door handle and window crank are both busted over there. And over here, yeah, they must have been a real good design. It had a heater though. That radio does look original. They went all out. Yeah, not too bad. A little whiskey dent on this side. Passenger side's usually worse. It's actually the driver's side. A few of them up here. I think that's part of being a having a tow hitch on it. Originally they must have had some black paint back in there. I don't know a ton about these internationals. Somebody out there probably does. You can tell it's an early Dana 44 by the press-on hub with the axle nut sticking out the side. Cab corners are good. A little dent there. Ugly international steering wheel. Ooh, it had blinkers even. Fancy. So I think we're going to wheel her over in front of the shop, jack it up, put some roller tires on it so it doesn't look so hideous sitting around the yard. Try getting that hood open, since those other nitwits couldn't do it. And, uh, can you throw a battery in it? Go for a ride. I'm sure the brakes are fine. Ran one park, they said. Just needed a fuel pump. Sure, Mike. <laughs> Four and a half inch bolt pattern, same as Ford cars and Mopar cars. I think these are the original wheels out the old King 68 Dodge. It's right on. I'm not gonna get too wild with them because that hub is the wrong guy. A little bit of a rubber rake. I don't know what that's. 225 on the back and then like a 205 on the front. Doesn't look too shabby. Duffy. Yeah. Is that hard work getting it in here? So anyway, we got a drug inside. For some reason, of all of the garbage I have in the yard, you guys, from what I can ponder, this is the number two vehicle on the list behind the 60 Ford wagon, which was a surprise as well, but this is a really big surprise. I think it's because you guys are all odd, like me, and uh, like odd stuff. So, got this thing pulled in. It's negative four degrees out, so it's freaking cold. But, got her shoved in. Tires are a little bit low. Gotta figure out how to get the hood open, because still haven't done that, but. Uh, I eyeballed it and it looks like there's a couple of bolts up underneath. So we're going to take those out and just leave the latch with the cowl support, leave it in place and go from there. What a piece of crap that you guys picked. I mean, the front bumper's wrong, it's all whammy. That fender is toast. It clearly has had a small fire under the hood, a shotgun blast to the windshield, a couple of Hefty gals uh, body slammed the roof because I mean that's all this thing does is pull tail. It's got no antenna. I mean it's got a heater hose and some wire holding it. No mirror because whatever happened behind you is in the past so we don't need that. Oh it does have one in the middle. I don't even think Duffy will sit on that seat so we're gonna have to round up a seat. Good thing is we drug some more junk home since we shot the last video, so we got another one of our favorite 88 to 94 GM seats that we'll stuff in here. But I literally have no international parts, so hopefully it's loose and it's all there. It's got the least glass of anything you picked. Even that 37 Ford, I think, has all the glass. This thing has one wing window that's respectable. That... 
everything else is, is gone. And then the windshield is a gaping hole that, I mean, it's on Duffy's side, so you're just gonna have to suck some wind. Cause I'm guessing they're just about unattainable, especially in our budget. It's got left hand thread hardware on the left side, right hand on this side. I stuck some wheels and tires on it just to make it a roller, which it doesn't roll real well, so there's an issue there. Let's fix that dent. Let's. Got it. Oh, she's ready for SEMA duff. I might take some hammer and dolling up there. You say hi to the people on YouTube? Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. Good boy. Good boy. I mean, it's got two headlights. And she's a hybrid. Midwest things. We were way ahead of the California curve. Get the hood open. Let's see what we got, Duff. Let's fix that other dent here since we got the body hammer out. Oops, I went the headliner. Good to go. What a gem. I don't know what to think about you guys. Really? A 63 International of all things. Kind of want to call it Bob. Short Bob. International Bob. Binder Bob. Binder Bob it is. Unless you guys can think of something better. Comment down below what you think we should call it. Kind of like Binder Bob. What do you think, Duff? He's like, take the ratchet strap off the door so I can jump in and check it out. You want to check it out? Will you even go in there? I bet you won't. Duff's like, I wouldn't even stoop to the level of riding in this thing. See what happens. Oh, yeah. There's no floor to step on. And this, you go for it. See what? Yeah. There you go, guys. It's got no door handles, no floors, no seats. So Duff is, doesn't even want nothing to do with it. Want to go for a ride? Should we go for a ride? He knows this ain't gonna run. God. Hope you guys enjoy me being miserable. Well, we can make it like a Jeep and just take the doors off because I don't think there's much holding that one. It's got the keys. We're good to go. Cripes. All right, here we go. Get the hood off. Well, just hold the frickin' show. I can't contain myself. I'm just so excited. First thing is, international grills are literally just held in by clips, no hardware. So you just grab them and just pull them right out. Something I'm not experienced with. Anywho, uh, they also have the world's tallest engine. Oh. And they're a great spot for mice. This looks like a GM air cleaner, but it's, it's apparently the IH 152, I don't know, 90, uh, 9 horsepower, 1964. I'm calling it a 63 because that's what the VIN comes up as. But it looks like some modifications there. Somebody was real proud of this thing with that air cleaner. We got pieces falling everywhere. Did they make some type of adapter there? Oh, yeah. Well, that gasket is special. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some... Ray Charles with his feet welding. Brought to you by Bill and Stitch's mobile taxidermy and well drilling. Oh, wait. Why is there a fan belt laying there? Probably because somebody else thought they needed the generator alternator, which looks like was modified for a GM unit. Flexi hoses, my favorite. Why? Why do people use flex hoses? Oh, it's got the lever pull high performance radiator cap which is empty look at that cute little radiator though i mean this thing probably holds like three or four pints of fluid is that a vacuum pump oh did we need that probably just just the fuel line yeah we don't need that throttle linkage nope not gonna need that either so clearly somebody as, this thing is as virgin as they come. Totally unmolested. I'm guessing this is where the battery used to sit before it fell through. Oh, look at that. You got some U-bolts clamping a shock to the steering because, you know, these drove like garbage. 
So just clamp a shock to it. Oh, that's the ground. Yeah, I love it when they do that. Take a red cable and make that into a ground. And this is the power cable running all the way through here. Oh yeah, that's not gonna get pinched in there at all. Good work, good work. All the way, wait, where's the starter at? Way down there. Why didn't they put the battery over here? Where's the dipstick? Oh, it's, it's just looking me right in the face. It's IH oil. You know, tractor companies making pickups. Yeah, let's see that. Where's your John Deere pickup at now? Oh, I love round dipsticks. She's full of something. That's the good stuff. Yeah, that's like maple syrup. Looks like those Canadians up there, like Coastal Auto Reaction, old car guy, and the mouthful. Sobering Restoration Automotive Services and Horsepower Division. You know who likes Flexi radiator hoses? Oh my gosh, look at that, three of them. That one doesn't even need a clamp. That's how good flex hoses are that you don't, you don't even need to run a clamp on them. Just stick them on, they're good to go. But the only person who likes them is the parts salesman because they laugh and then the radiator guys because they know that you're gonna come and have to get your radiator fixed after it rips the neck off. And mice, mice like chewing on them until they get down to the metal wire in there. Tech tip of the day, just ban flexi hoses. No flex hoses. Cute little carburetor. Pretty much everything's unhooked. Fuel line's unhooked. Was it a glass bowl? No, just a little one barrel holly. Well, I guess here's, oh, we can't even grab the fan and turn it over because, because the water pump's stuck. <sighs> Don't have one of those on hand. Not gonna have that fuel pump with the vacuum canister. I assume that's a vacuum canister. I don't, they got it looped for some reason. There's the inlet, there's the outlet. Oh yeah, must have been. Why would it have a vacuum pump? It's got electric wipers. Maybe it's not a vacuum pump, who knows. Look at that sweet hydraulic clutch setup. You know, just mount her way up here. With a big long lever. Easy to get at, I'll give them that. So, is it gonna turn over? I don't know. I do not know. Look at that little bump out they got from the firewall to mount the master cylinder is Oh, brake lights aren't gonna work. Look at that freaking oil filter. That thing's bigger than the cylinders in this thing. Vacuum hose, oh that's for the vacuum advance, that was probably up there before somebody decided to take that apart. Still looking for a battery sponsor. Nobody stepped up here. So we got the red hooked up to the negative and the black hooked up to the positive. Because it really makes sense if you don't think about it. The battery cable end snapped off on the black positive and it was just about to snap off. Red negative or vice versa. So I grabbed these new real good overseas ends and stripped them off, put them on there. So, no smoke came out. Let's see if she cranks over, cause we got keys. Hey! What do you think of that thing, Duff? Um, it's, it's got some smells, huh? Yeah, enough of that. I think there's something dead in there, cause he's been hanging out underneath there for a while. Or there's something alive that is gonna now be living in the shop with him. Did you make a friend? So I'll take a victory sandwich sip here since we got to turn over. We're gonna need a water pump, so we'll just take that off of there for now. Oh, catch on the petcock. What a funny word, petcock. All right, meow. All right, meow. Now, I suppose we'll check for spark because we know we're not gonna have fuel and compression, that's the last thing we ever check for. So I can't turn it over in the cab and check for spark at the same time. So we're gonna hook up the one and only Mortsky switch because Duff refuses to assist. I'm sure the points are fine. We won't even have to take that cap off. Let's just get the magic yellow wire out here. Negative distributor. 
positive battery. Whoa. Apparently that's energizing the voltage regulator. Yeah, whatever. We'll call it good. No smoke, so we're good. No spark. Turns over like it's got compression, so that's a plus. Let's see what we got going on for points. Tell you what, these distributors up front, they're real user friendly. Oh, and all the wires going off to one side like that. That's handy. We can just flop her over like that gal in college. Corrosion on the caps. You always want to keep your nipples clean for maximum electrical penetration. Fixed it. Can't really get at the points of this rotor in place, so let's take that off. Clean that up before we stick it back on. Good as new. Weights don't seem like they're overly worn out. Are the points opening and closing? Guess we don't have to worry about the fan hitting us because the water pump's seized up and we don't have a belt. Well, the points are opening and closing. Flick them a few times, lose my screwdriver. Still nothing. How about now? Yeah, I think we're going to need to clean those points up. Got our points closed. I don't have power hooked up to them. Got a piece of, I guess I call it plumber's tape, but it's sandpaper. Plumber's tape is something else. I think you get a set of those point files like somebody told me about, but they're like $9 on Amazon. And I'm not rich, so if somebody wants to send me a set, or if they got a set of old ones that they don't use anymore, that'd be cool. Okay, we'll flick them a couple times just for luck. Why is it arcing back there? Oh, oh, the water doesn't have a spark. I had it hooked up in the wrong spot. My bad. I bet it works though now. Nice hot spark. Don't forget to put the rotor back on. Otherwise, bad things happen. It's got a square hole in a row. That's why, see, it's got a, a round peg and a square peg. It's that little game you played with the ball where you just hammered it in whatever hole you want. It's finally paying off in life. Never was good at it back then, so probably not any good at it now. I guess I was worried about sucking up some bad fuel, but since we don't have a fuel line hooked up here, we don't have a problem with that. Wouldn't that be neat if we could get this fired up before the snow melted off the engine? Take your bets now. You think Mortski will get her running for the snow melt? It is 60 degrees in here, so. It's not as cold as it looks. All right. Well, we got spark. Assume we got compression, so let's get the hot sauce. All right. Here goes the hot sauce. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. <laughs> Sure don't seem like it's even trying, huh, Duff? Oh, that one's the choke. And that's the throttle. What do you think? It sounds like it wants to. What do you think, Duff? Hook some fuel up to it? Yeah? Okay. Talk me into it. Plug wires are all on. I don't want to do that just yet. Let's give it some ether, buddy. All right, here goes with the Cosby sauce. After people have some of my barbecue sauce, after a while when it kicks in, they get all huggy-buggy. Come 
Zinger a little bit faster than I wanted to, but I think we just need to get some fuel to it the proper way, which is not what we've been doing. Let's uh, where are all our boat tanks? We need more boats around here. Hopefully, that adapter is the right thread. Yep, even though it's rounded off from a vice grip, let's put a wrench on it just to make me feel better about myself. Oh, is the inlet stripped on the carburetor? Oh, yeah, nice work, guys. That might be the problem. Looks like we're gonna be looking for a carburetor. I don't know. Just gets better all the time. So in theory, with the fuel tank mounted up on two ton Tanya's indentation on the roof there, we should have plenty of fuel. We probably don't. It smells like ether still. We'll see what happens. Ah, who are we kidding? Let's hook up some fuel. Oh yeah, that's leaking out the bowl, so we should have fuel. What's going on in here? to go though. I, I knew it. Oh, time for a new battery. Dang it. We tried. That one's a little warm. Not too hot. That's good. Oh, this one's for sure gonna fall through the fender. Black to positive, red to negative. Just the way they designed it. We just needed a better battery, no namer. Snow's melting, we gotta get this running dump, we're gonna lose the shop. get any fuel in to there from there so well that screw is missing completely the way fuels leaking out there should be fuel there oh of course that gas it's gonna tear oh man so that carburetor she's not looking good well like Rosie O'Donnell on a Monday morning and we're not getting any fuel. Should just be pouring out of this side of the carburetor. Maybe, maybe it's just that my pump ain't working. Let's see. Oh yeah, we got fuel there. So we need to find a carburetor. Why did you guys pick this thing? I have literally zero 304, 152, 392 international parts around. I might have a 392 international valve cover, which is the same as a 345. The snow is melting. Oh my gosh, the bolts even have IH stamped in the top. I thought only Caterpillar would stoop that low. Does John Deere do that too? Why is there four heater hose connections going into the firewall? This thing must have the best heater ever. Probably because it doesn't have any floors. Makes sense if you don't think about it. You don't suppose a oh, carburetor off a 53 Ford will bolt on. I bet it will. Let's clean some debris over there. Oh, 
this one will be fine. Maybe if we can get the throttle valve free, it'll come right out the bottom. Which way is that gotta go that way? Uh, we need some Zeppo. Yeah, this one. This is the fancy glass bowl one. Don't break that. Come on. There we go. You know you want to. It moved. Got ourselves a pair of CTs here. Oh, yeah. Good to go. Good to go. That just seals up the throttle valves that much better. Now it's a blower out. Get on out of there, mouse nest. I'm sure it'll suck the rest right through. Still got snow on the engine? Getting there. Run out of time! Once that snow melts, Duff, we lose the shop. Did they really take the shop on Christmas? Yeah, probably. <laughs> At least we can see if the fuel bowl fills up on this glass one. It's not looking good. The float is down, so it should be getting fuel. The Chinesium fuel shut off. It's not working. Well, it's not opening. Well, now we're filling up. Before we overfill it, let's see what happens. I think that timing's off. <laughs> It is just dumping fuel out the fuel bowl, so we better shut it off before we burn the garage down. But it's running before the snow melted. Let's twist on it a bit, you know, because in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> With this carburetor that's held together with one screw and basically on hopes and dreams, that's that's as good as she's gonna rip for now. We need to find a different carburetor scenario, see what happens. But we're gonna be able to keep the shot, so perfect. Did a little digging in the dumpster behind the old Piggly Wiggly and we got another glass bowl holly. Somebody put the bowl on upside down. Yep. And a carburetor off a 270 GMC. Let's stick with the glass bowl. I'm really leaning towards the GMC because, you know, a GM one's going to run. But we'll, we'll give the old glass bowl a try. Okay. Hey, the floats work. Oh, just kidding. The floats not working. Ah, stupid choke. We gotta wear that choke open. <laughs> carburetor is way better. Oh, it's an exhaust leak. I was gonna say, I see some random sparks flying around down here. 
Needs a muffler though, don't it, Duff? Sweet. What are the odds the clutch works? We're not worried about brakes. Now we gotta figure out how to... Oh. Oh yeah, let's see if it searches the key. And we'll see if we can get some throttle linkage action going. Maybe get a water pump. Clutch? It's a long list. I'm gonna need another sandwich. No cranky crank inside the cab, Duff. So here's our factory international linkage. Choke linkage is all the same. Looks like this base is different. So, if we swap this mystery base with this international base, we should be able to hook our linkages up. Because yeah, the linkage is way back here on whatever this is, I assume a Ford. And it's way up here on the international. So let's pop that off there, see how that goes. Hopefully we can harvest a gasket for one of the two. Looks like the gasket's gonna survive on the inner smash and all. So hopefully the interchange. So we got our base, the IH grafted onto the main body of whatever. So we should be able to hook up our linkage now at least. So at least we can run the throttle from in the cab. You have it over centered? Is that where the issue is? I bet we do. Yeah, what a stupid design on that. Well, it's working in there. Sure enough, it was over centered. What a janky mechanism that is. Well, let's see what we got in the clutch. We know the brake, yeah, it's all going to be empty, but let's see if we can get a clutch. And bone dry. Imagine that though. First look, it looks like the same reservoir as a like 60 to 62 GM. The bolt pattern's different. I think the GM's got one each there on the outside and then one in the middle. This one's got four on the outside and uh, none in the middle. So close. You know, you guys could have just shared the same parts, but here we are. Let's blow the crud out of there before we even try. Bleeder seems to be clear, so I think we're going to try reverse bleeding it using the old veterinarian heroin injection unit. Got a little on the paint. Good news is it's just the galvanized part. We better cap that back off because we spill our brake fluid. We're probably out of brakes for a long time. So. Now, did any of that go up into the reservoir? Uh, nope. So, I'm not having anything to do with that. Sweet. Well, let's dump what we got left for fluid into the reservoir. Weed's tough. Let's see if we can't bleed her into the old Canada Dry bottle. <laughs> Mouse poop. Mmm, hentavirus. Get any bulls out here? I don't think we get anywhere with that. I'm sure the seals and the master are just fine after 41 years. You don't think so? Yeah, probably not. Well, now what? Should we pull it apart? Because new ones are in back order. Yeah, not what I wanted to do either. You gonna finally get up here and help? Well, we got our master off. And it's pretty rusty. See if we can't get it apart. Go from there. And there's a couple of metal sleeves in there that gotta slide out. One per cylinder. And then there's seals on those, and those seals are what seals that cylinder and pushes the fluid out every time you hit the brakes or the clutch. But it's pretty rusty, so I don't know how we're gonna get those out of there. And then we gotta see if we can find seals. Typically I wouldn't even mess with these things, but 
I can't get a new one. Well, Rock Auto doesn't have them, but you can go on like international only sites and they're like $300. So I was gonna see if I could rebuild this one, but it's not looking good. Awesome. So I gotta figure out how we're gonna get those out of there. The only thing I can think of is some compressed air and with all that rust in there, I don't think that's gonna fare very well. Let's see what happens. So I went dashing through the snow and I found the GM version. The difference between these is, that one says IH of course, and that's the brake you can tell because it's got the pressure switch. GM crossed the pedals over, so the brake is on the outside, clutch is on the inside. But I think you can pull the guts out and swap them around. So I'm gonna see if this one comes apart. Oh, see, look at how much better that one looks than this one. I took the reamer and tried cleaning them out and then putting air pressure to them. No, they're stuck. So hopefully we can get this one apart and then maybe just flop them around and bolt it up with two bolts. I don't know, let's see what happens. Hey! hey, hey. Piston, that was the word I was looking for. The piston. And you got a couple seals on there. So you got that seal on the piston there. So if you were to rebuild one of these, you'd put a new cup on there, I think is what they call them. How do we get that one to come out? The oil's gonna come out when I push on that, right? Oh yeah, yep, yeah, all over my phone. It moves, but it won't quite slide out of there. A lot of hot rod guys like to use these GM ones for hydraulic clutches and traditional hot rod stuff. So I know guys have been known to flip these pistons around. There's something to do with the valving in them for the clutch and the brake. I don't know, I think they're the, they are different diameters. So we can't do that. Hmm. I'm gonna have to do some digging online to see what exactly those guys do. Cause maybe they just go with a different size bore on each of them and they work fine. I don't know. But you can see this is the brake. And this is the clutch. I don't know if those holes have much to do with it, but you can see the diameters quite a bit different. Well, it's probably only an eighth inch difference. But you're going to move a lot more fluid with the same stroke as you are with this one. There's another cup on the inside and usually those tell you the diameter like that says inch and an eighth right there. I think there's a spring behind it. There's your spring. And then that side's an inch and a quarter. Eighth inch difference, good guess. Your rebuild kit will come with new cups as well. Yeah, there's not much you can flip around in there. Seems other like different diameters. Unless there's something else I'm missing out on. Let me get cleaned up, do some digging on the interwebs. So I got this screw extractor. There we call it. We're gonna see if we can't get that into the piston. Get it to turn out of there. It's not happy. I wonder if we gave him some heat. Uh, then we ruined the seals for sure. But they're already probably shot. Guess it's warm when that happens. I wonder if we plug that and heat it. If the 
heat will push it out. Probably not. I'm gonna do the white trash line lock trick where you just take a brad nail. Drop her inside of that. Oh, we might need a bigger nail. Then you just tighten it up inside of the... Ah, that one might work. You tighten that up and that blocks it off. And then maybe when we heat it, pressure will... Try to push that cylinder out. This is how Mortsky loses his eye. So I did a little research. Well, first thing, this is the GM one. It's got a three bolt pattern. IH one has got the four bolt pattern. So I think I can drill this hole out. This is off that big GMC 4562 model. And the brake cylinder on these, which will be the clutch cylinder on that, is inch and a quarter. And this is inch and an eighth. Where on the pickups, they're both inch and an eighth. So you can interchange the residual valves. So we're going to do the right thing and just put that on there and call it good. And so I guess this spring here is what contains your residual valve. And uh, if I was going to try to get that other one apart, then I was just going to put the residual valves out of that one in there because obviously I can't get that residual valve into here unless we do a little bit of trimming. But I could put this residual valve into the brake side because you can see how these residual valves, obviously they're different size wise, but then you look at the holes I don't know if you guys can see that back there, but they're quite a bit larger on this one for your brakes than they are for the clutch. For what we're doing, it's probably going to be fine, and we're going to have to... I'd like to find one with both the same sizes on a Chevy, so I can at least flip them around and we'll call it good. Then we're going to need to tear this apart at some point anyway, because I don't have new seals on hand. So, this one actually looked pretty good inside this truck. Had been off the road for a few years, but it was full of fluid, so that helps. I cleaned it up a bit, got most of the sludge out of there. How should we do this? Maybe, hey, hey, now we're getting smart. Well, that won't work either. What am I thinking? So this one's got to stay over there. I think I'll try trimming this one off a bit so we can get it into the brakes. Check back. The old Beverly Shear made quick work of whittling that down. And the reason you need to have the right residual valve in there is for the rate that it returns, like your brakes will return slow. But you gotta have a, a larger residual valve on your clutch because so, that's gonna return faster. The, you don't want your clutch to return real slow, it's gonna slip your clutch. Or with brakes, you want them to return slow. And plus it keeps a little bit of pressure on your brakes so every time you hit it, you don't have that delay. And then again, if we had a half ton or three quarter ton pickup, they'd both be inch and an eighth and we could just flip them around. We can't do that on here. So the issue might be with the clutch, we're going to get more travel than we probably need. So we, And we might have a funny feel to the clutch. But The other thing that we could have done is we could have just flipped the hoses around. But then our pedals would be backwards, and boy, that would be fun to drive. Comment down below if you want me to try swapping the pedals around and driving this thing with a clutch and a brake. That sounds like trouble. We should try it though, huh, Duff? So then we got to put our cups back in there. We'll get some brake fluid and put on there to lubricate them. Got kind of a brake fluid shortage going on here, so we're just going to see if we can use some old stuff. Make it work. And once you get it in there, you just gotta make sure it's straight and you should be able to push it right in there. And always make sure that you put the piston in the right way. You can see where the pedal rod goes in there. Don't put it in that way. You'll have issues. All right, one down, one to go. Got it. Slam her on there. 
you can see the international bolt pattern. It's got four bolts. The GM is a three bolt pattern, so I'll have to drill a hole right there. I think before we get started, I'm gonna take that screw out right there just in case it gets in the way. Clutch rod, you can see the brake rod there. The clutch rod's kind of hanging down there, so I might have to fish that up here before I get it tightened up. Okay, well, let's go find that plug. Now I wonder if we can reverse bleed it. Because I think that reservoir was, oh yeah. Yeah, I think it's because the plunger or the piston, somebody pushed the pedals and everything was stuck down. So that's why I couldn't get pressure up there. There's nowhere for it to go. Oh, no fluid yet. So if you think about it, this syringe is basically the exact same thing as that master cylinder. As you push your pedal, it pushes fluid out. As your pedal lets up, fluid returns. Quick, easy way to show the concept theory how masters work. And a slave cylinder is basically the same thing. I don't want to give fluid. Uh oh, what is the deal now? Guess we'll put some fluid in that reservoir. See if we can't bleed it. I wouldn't normally recommend using used brake fluid, but we're in a budget. And we gotta get this done. So we got our one man bleeder bottle hooked up. Now I'm gonna go push the pedal. It'd be nice if I could see if there's air coming up in the bottle, but I don't know that I will be able to. Watch for bubbles. We're right there. Tighten that up. Press the pedal a couple times, see if the pedal feels like I got clutch. Clutch bleeding has never been a strong suit of mine. Where's that fluid at that I'm hearing? Duff, push the clutch. I'm gonna take a paint marker and put a mark on the clutch rod. Then I'm gonna take this hood prop, push the pedal down and come out here and see if the mark moved. Because you guys are very vocal and telling me if it moved or not. Uh, no. So here's the slave cylinder off the International. You can tell, because it says International. Uh, apparently it's one inch diameter. I guess that's what, what that means. And it's seized up. I tried cleaning it up with the tool for cleaning things up. I'm putting air behind it. And it still don't want to spit that piston out of there. So I had a, 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 a Tiffany last night laying in my bed. No, 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 that's not the word. Uh, an epiphany. It's where, you, it's where you have an idea that's a good one. I don't, I don't have many Tiffany's, but anyway, we're gonna push grease in there to push it out. Cause I heated the snot out of it. Literally, it was chooching back here and I got real angry, didn't have the camera on. So let's see what happens. Cause we gotta get that out of there so that our clutch can work. Cause this is unattainium bull finger. Here we go. Hydraulic clutches are stupid. Oh. We're getting dust out of there. Hey, look at that. It's lying right out. Gosh dang, Tiffany, she's smart. Boop. Oh yeah. You can see I cooked that seal when I baked her out of there. So we just need some new seals and to clean all that grease out of there. And hopefully I didn't scar up the insides too much. So you got our slave cylinder cleaned up-ish, kind of, not that good. Of course. And I couldn't find these O-ring looking V-ring thingers. So we're just going to try to put a wheel cylinder cup behind it. And the old timer says with that chamfer it's not going to work. Allegedly. We're going to try it anyway. And if that don't work we could either put a washer behind it. Or we could throw it in the old lave and uh, flatten that face out. But we got some fresh brake fluid today. We went to the big city. So, we're going to try it out first, because that's easier. You're probably supposed to lubricate these things with something else, but... We're going to just use some crappy old brake fluid. And make sure you put them in with the cup facing in. And 
then again, that's where your clutch rod goes. Push that in there. And let's see what happens, I guess. Nothing to lose. Oh, oh yeah, we lost that snap ring last night. Son of a biscuit. That might be interesting. I don't remember where that shot off to. Okay, we got her. Terribly rebuilt slave cylinder with our mismatched master cylinder. Reverse blood it with our horse tranquilizer here. I'm gonna go hit the pedal. You guys watch, see if it moves. I don't have much faith, but we're running out of options. Doesn't feel like it's doing much. I can't move that rod by hand. I wonder if the clutch didn't become engaged and doesn't want to disengage. So I got the pickup in gear. We'll roll. Clutch in. Push in with my one good foot. Get off. We got a clutch. Now what? Okay, so now that we got a clutch, put the battery back in it. Move the fuel tank inside. I even rolled a belt over the fan blade and pried enough on the fan blade so that it moves. I don't have much faith in the water pump working, but it's turning. Let's see if it turns over still. Hopefully it's out of gear. Oh yeah, it's out of gear. I wanna see if the ignition switch inside the cab is working. Crank part doesn't work. Give it a spark. Sparking. The fuel pump not pumping. Well, that's the nice part about this glass bowl carburetor. You can see it's full of fuel. Why are you not starting? So here's where we're at with the inner smashinal. Bob the binder. You can see we got fuel in the carburetor. Thanks to the holly glass bowl here. We're not getting fuel into the carburetor. So you gotta buy a carb kit, which is 45 bucks. So we'll say 50 by the time we get it shipped. Plus we gotta wait a while to get it. I'm not real confident in the master cylinder and or clutch because we don't have clutch anymore after it sat overnight. Kind of figured that that would happen. A master cylinder is like 250 bucks and the slave cylinder, which is on back order, is another 140 bucks. So we got 250, 130, 380 plus 50. 430 bucks just into those components right there. I, I'm not that in love with this thing. Plus, this isn't really the drivetrain I want in it. So you guys go ahead and rip me apart. Let me know what you think. I mean, this thing is chewy, you know, the inner fender's rotten. The floors are absolutely gone. When I was trying to figure out some wiring for the ignition switch, I noticed that She's real chewy way up underneath the dash even. That's like unheard of, but maybe it's common for internationals, but this thing's just, it's, it's freaking rough. The bed floor is not really there. I mean, Duffy won't even climb into it. Probably because there's nothing to step on without poking himself. And then we gotta do windows and a seat. We gotta wire up lights. Then we get to the rest of the brakes. I just, I don't know. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, keep an eye open for a rear wheel drive, something or other, like a Chevy Caprice or a Dodge Diplomat or a C10 Chevy pickup. Something that's like a V8 automatic with disc brakes, independent front, and we just swap everything in there. Go check out Put in Stab Shop, he's got one of these, put in green. I think he grafted a Caprice, what do they call it, an A-body? So I think he grafted like an Impala Caprice. Pontiac Parisian front end in his and a small block Chevy, automatic, put a four link, air ride. I mean, it's, it's cool, but he's way down south where his is way drier, you know. I keep ripping away at this thing, but it's just, it's tough, it's so tough. 
And I don't want to buy these oddball international only parts that I'm not going to get my money back out of. Or if I bought a cap and rotor for a small block Chevy or a starter for a small block Chevy, I can use it somewhere else or sell it to somebody. But these international parts just, they're not going to pan out on the investment. So that's what we're going to end it on. Old binder Bob here. Do some thinking. Long, hard thinking. Figure out what we're going to do with this thing. Probably got another carb off the $50 Ford that would bolt on there just to get it running and do a burnout. And then we still got to figure out the clutch and the brakes. And then we got to find glass. So maybe I'll keep an eye out for a parts pickup that's probably better than this one. And then this can be the parts pickup. But I don't know. You guys let me know. What, what do you think? What do you think we should do with Binder Bob? I know Duff, he's not attached. He's even less attached than I am, surprisingly. All right. Thanks for watching. I mean, we got it running, so kind of won, but Bob's a pretty big disappointment in my eyes. But remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Mm, Bob's not a lot of fun, but can't win them all. Seem to be losing a lot lately, though, aren't we, Duff? We are losers. Let's get our fuel tank back and get this thing out of our lives.